Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and I get a lot of questions about the fish behind me, which I refer to as my big boys. Now I haven't updated you guys on them in some time and that's for a very specific and sort of sad reason. Big predatory fish have a bunch of unique challenges and I wanted to start today by telling you a bit more about the species in that aquarium as well as the choices I've made for the aquarium as I've housed them over the past decade. Now I got most of these fish when they were really small except for the tropical gar who was about a foot long. Uh, this, this tank which is a seven foot by two foot by two foot aquarium houses two gar and three Bashir, Biker, Bircher, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, Polypterus and Lacari. Now, the Polypterus and Lacari and the Gar are both considered to be primitive fishes. Um, they are extremely tough, extremely cool, sort of uncommon, and exceptionally long-lived. And I get a lot of comments about upgrading this aquarium, which is something I would like to do in the future, but the reality is for the fish that I have in it, it's perfectly fine um, simply because both these species are ambush predators and what that means is that they tend to stay relatively sedentary that's not to say they don't swim but they're not a fish that is an active swimmer for instance the gars tend to stay towards the top uh, in the wild they do the same thing they sort of lay in wait and wait for their prey to swim by where they attack them from the side thrash them with their head impale them on their teeth and then orient them to swallow them whole head first. And the polypterus are not that different except for they lay in wait on the bottom where they sit very still and basically wait as well for fish to swim by where they then grab them and swallow them whole. Neither, none of the species in this aquarium are, are ones that are like particularly open water swimmers. They're not particularly active. So while I would love to have a bigger aquarium, that does not contribute to the story I'm going to tell you today. Um, as I mentioned, I've been working with these fish for a really long time, and anyone who's met me or asked me what my favorite fish is or talked to me about fish knows that these guys, I absolutely love them, and I certainly do the best that I can to care for them. The aquarium is set up with no substrate. Um, I've grown algae on most of the surfaces, and this is to create a visual barrier for the gar, as gar, when they decide to move, can move quite quickly. Now both species as well have sort of a highly vascularized swim bladder um, and in the gars it's attached to their pharynx or their throat which allows them to live in really low oxygen environments and gulp air from the surface. Because of that I keep the water line dropped in this aquarium as well. This aquarium is also outfitted with super heavy duty lids that have small feeding ports um, but that is part of the story today. You see, sometimes big fish get spooked and they jump. And I thought that my aquarium was perfectly safe for these fish because they've been in it for 10 years. I keep that water line drop so they're unlikely to hit the lids. Uh, it's a very tight fit. I'll show you that they're, they're really the only open spot on the entire aquarium is the feeding port. Um, so several months ago, I was working down here and I heard a splash, which is not at all uncommon in this aquarium as the gars in particular tend to slap the water surface in order to get my attention. I didn't think anything of it because why would I? I've been working with these guys, the polys for 12 plus years, the gars for 10 plus years. They make those sorts of noises all the time when they come up to gulp air or slap the surface. Well, unfortunately this time it was different. Uh, probably about a half an hour later, I walked over to my shipping station to putz around with my nanos and I found my Cuban gar, the smallest fish in this aquarium, on the floor. And I, I did, was flabbergasted. I didn't know exactly what to do. I certainly didn't take time to grab the camera. What I did is I grabbed one of my uh, many, many um, fish room rags. I dipped it in the water. I picked up the fish and I got him back in the aquarium. I wanted to make sure that he was back in water as soon as possible. I held him in the output of the can or of the filter to run some air across his gills, and he quickly swam away. Now he looked a little rough. Uh, I mean, he had 
dirt and everything stuck to him, but I just turned out the lights on the aquarium and came back the next day. And when I came back the next day, I saw that the gar was injured. Um, apparently he had ripped open his lower jaw and a piece of cartilage is protruding downwards. I contacted my veterinarian. The veterinarian asked if the fish could eat. So I tried feeding them and the fish could eat fine. He told me to observe it, keep an eye on it, and let him know if anything changed in the condition of the fish. Now, the biggest risk with gars in particular is that they break their nose, their beak, or their back, um, as their bodies are very rigid. The fish was fine in that regard. It just had this flap hanging down. Again, it can eat just fine. So I consulted another vet, thinking that, you know, in the best interest of the fish, would be to repair this defect uh, because it bothered me to look at. There was no swelling, there was no uh, visible vascular activity, like it wasn't red, there were no veins showing, um, which was a concern to me because the way Gar's scales are set up is that they're highly vascularized and they're in two layers. They're called ganoid scales, and the top lever, layer is, um, and one layer is made from um, ganoin, and the other is isopedine. I don't know how to say that, but basically both are highly vascularized, and they interlock and create like a pseudo armor, which is part of the reason these fish are so tough, and part of the reason my gar was fine on the ground for half an hour. Well, fine is the wrong word, but the part of the reason that the fish survived with no visible outward injury other than the damage to his lower jaw. Um, so basically I consulted, it ended up being three veterinarians and basically they were all of the opinion that if the fish could eat, if it wasn't in obvious discomfort, then I would be doing a great disservice to this fish to do a surgical repair uh, because they were of the mind of do no harm. And I have to admit, I agree with that, but my, my biggest conflict is the potential of the backlash I would get on YouTube, which I decided at the end of the day is really freaking stupid because we are supposed to do the best we can for the critters in our care. And if I make the decision to keep my gar with an imperfection rather than putting it through the stress of sedation and a surgery and the prolonged healing time, I think that's the smartest decision. Now, that is not to criticize anyone who chooses to do cosmetic surgery on their fish, not in the slightest, this is a personal choice. You know, and I was really on the fence because I want this fish to be the best example of it to share with everyone, but the reality is also that shit happens. Um, I rarely have fish jump. I have super heavy duty lids on that aquarium. Um, I have no idea how that fish physically fit through the feeding port. It is bigger in diameter. I really am at a loss as to how this happened. But one of the things that the veterinarians also explained to me is that because of the nature of the injury, if we were to slice it off and sew it up, it's entirely possible that this damaged flesh would come back as proud flesh, which means basically uh, granulated scar tissue that would continue to grow back. So because they didn't think that it would automatically be a one and done successful surgery, I have opted to just let my fish live on in his perfectly imperfect way. Uh, with no compromise to his feeding, no compromise to his life, uh, he's just not as pretty as he used to be. So I hope that all of you will, will just, I don't even know, take, take a lesson from this that sometimes no matter our best intentions, Things happen, uh, especially with large and predatory fish. I mean, gars hang out at the surface in the wild. They jump and thrash for their prey. Um, this is something that just happened, and I really don't have a solution for my particular query. And what I've taken to doing is putting cans of krill over the feeding ports um, so that there is not that little hole, even though none of the fish can technically physically fit through it, although I guess the Cuban guard proved me wrong there. 
Anyway, um, I do apologize for having kept this secret for you for months, um, but you know, I was I was just really, really intimidated to share what for me is a heartbreaking story about my guard. Now I'm very relieved that he's fine, um, but I hope that all of you can can remember this when you have problems in your own personal tanks and cut yourself some slack. Sometimes, sometimes shit just happens. Um, anyway, uh, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you're subscribed with that notification bell on. Uh, I hope you're kind to me in the comments, but if not, you know, I'll take my lumps. This is certainly a video I wish I would have never had to make. As always, thanks to those of you who give me continued support.